Hello, my name is Ivana Batkovic. First, I wanted to thank organizers for uh, preparing such a nice conference and uh, letting me present my work today. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Padova under supervision of Michele Doro. Uh, on the bottom of this slide, uh, you can see um, people, scientists from Magic Collaboration, who am I a member of. Uh, we are currently working together on a search for axon-like particle signatures in the spectrum of NGC1275 with MAGIC. So this, is, uh, this was currently started with my master thesis back at the University of Rijeka in Croatia. So I will briefly just go through my motivation, what data set we used, uh, what were the results, and what are the future prospects uh, with the group currently within the MAGIC. So as uh, Masaki uh, previously said, uh, axions are introduced in um, particle physics as a solution of CP problem, actually arising uh, as a consequence of spontaneous breaking of U1 PECO symmetry. So there are pseudon and Wollstone bosons. What is really interesting about axions is that they have a certain photon axion interaction which allows us to uh, do experimental searches. Um, in more general case, we are observing axion-like particles, which as uh, Masaki said, have independent, pa independent parameters of mass and strength of their coupling to photons. Uh, one thing, uh, one thing they are also very interesting for uh, is that they, if sufficiently with small mass up in micro micro electron volts, they are a good dark matter candidates. But what mostly motivated me to do this study was this article by Alejo et al. from 2016 from Fermilab collaboration. So they did a search uh, in their energy range from 100 MeV to 500 GeV uh, of uh, gamma rays. Uh, they did a search um, on six uh, years of data, uh, proposed mixing in galaxy cluster and intercluster inter medium uh, magnetic fields while neglecting intergalactic magnetic field. Uh, so they used a part of parameter space of axion-like particles. They uh, did axion-like particle predictions. They uh, folded them with their spectrum. They, they obtained with the fit of their spectrum, which was log parabola, and calculated maximum likelihood in order to obtain and they posed constraints on axion-like parameter space, as you can see on figure number two. Uh, so axions and axion-like particles are studied in broad uh, range of electromagnetic spectrum. And on figure number three, you can see uh, a part which is accessible by gamma rays. So when we went through this article, we were like, okay, this is something that could and should be done also with magic just in our energy range. So we uh, decided to search for um, effects of uh, interaction of ALPs with photons causing oscillations in the spectra of epigalactic nuclei, or even in nucleonucleon Bremsstrahlung, uh, which uh, is present in neutron stars and cooling of neutron stars, and which we are currently uh, researching to, to pose a, uh, to search on. So what, when we started uh, with, the, with my thesis, First thing we wanted to, to use, what was needed, was extended magnetic field. And that's why we decided to go with NGC1275, which is located at the center uh, of the Perseus cluster. Uh, when we were looking for part of ax axion-like par particles parameter space in which we are going to probe mass and coupling, we had uh, uh, to take into account critical energy, about which this maximal mixing between, uh, uh, between axion-like particles and photons is taking part. So currently, uh, as we already heard, there are lots of experimental constraints posed on axion-like par particles parameter space, either with helioscopes such as CAST, haloscopes, so in micro electron volts uh, mass range, uh, and some other also experiments not mentioned here. But the third, which is the most important to us and which we are doing is by observing spectra of astrophysical sources using gamma rays. 
So when we started our search, we decided to go with NGC 1275. In MAGIC, we have a lot of data uh, on this source. Um, it is embedded in, uh, in, magne in strong magnetic field, uh, extended magnetic field. And we, we took 55 hours of data and did the analysis of, uh, of this source using uh, MAGIC software. Uh, of our magic telescopes, which are uh, which magic collaboration uh, has two telescopes uh, located uh, at La Palma Observatory. Those are 17 uh, meter uh, diameter imaging atmospheric Cherenkov telescopes. What they are uh, recording are Cherenkov uh, is Cherenkov light, which occurs when a particle travels with speed higher than speed of light in the medium, and as a consequence emits uh, photons, which um, which are um, repre repre represented as a faint, very fast blue flash, which reflects of the mirrors of the telescopes and are collected in the camera of the telescopes. And we do all of this in energy range from 30 GeV to 100 TeV. As I mentioned before, um, this study was not also done by us on, on this set of data of NGC 1275. It was also done previously also within our collaboration, but in 2018, and as you can see, uh, in this figure number five, it is represented uh, the light curve of the whole sample uh, from the observational period of NGC 1275. And this uh, particular point is representing flaring state of NGC 1275, which we decided also to probe in our search with, uh, for axion-like uh, particles. And in the figure number six, you can see spectral energy distribution divided by different states of this source and the state that we are using is represented with red line and uh, it is a flaring state uh, of uh, 1st of January of 2017. So when we obtained spectral energy distribution, analyzed the data, we wanted to do a fitting and, we, and it turned out that the best fit for our spectrum was power law with exponential cutoff. So we wanted to use power law with exponential cutoff with given parameters to fold it with axion-like uh, particle predictions and to compare it with the intrinsic spectral energy distribution of our source. Axion-like particles predictions uh, were done using gamma ALPS code, which is a Python code developed by Manuel Mayer, which solves the equations of motion of a photon ALPS system using the transfer matrix method. So what is really important to have a model of magnetic field which was already into, uh, counted into, um, into the code, and to put in mass and uh, coupling of photons, their values of so parameters that we want to probe. What we expect are spectral irregularities to occur around the critical energy, which depend on the strength and the morphology of magnetic field, which is why it's really important to have a good, good model of magnetic field. Um, also, uh, it is important to, to make a lot of realizations uh, for each set of parameters, as they did in uh, article by, Fe uh, by Fermilat, in order to take into account this randomness of turbulent, uh, turbulent magnetic field. So we did a calculation on photon survival probability, which is a probability that once initially um, emitted photon will be again detected as photon uh, in our detector. Uh, so it will not undergo mixing um, or it will undergo mixing with ALPS, but it will reconvert in uh, Milky Way magnetic field. Uh, we plotted for several different sets of parameters uh, this uh, photon survival probability. So for this uh, for this presentation, I decided to show you just one set of parameters with 10 different realizations of magnetic field, which are represented in figure eight with different colors, but they are really dense. So uh, they are not really, cannot be really easily distinguished. Um, and on the right side, you can see spectral energy distribution of flaring state of NGC 1275. So on figure number eight, we can see a convolution of it. So EPVL fits to our SED that is folded with predictions of uh, axion-like particles. So with uh, photon survival probability. 
from these two plots, just comparing them as now we can see, um, we cannot uh, gather any any very significant conclusions. Other that for the next, for future study, we need more data to analyze, to probe uh, other sources, uh, other spectral energy distributions, and to to uh, maybe take uh, into account different sets of parameters, of course, which is planned, uh, to propose stronger irregularities in our energy range. So what is the conclusion is that we did the analysis of NGC1275. We analyzed it using the magic software. We fit the spectral energy distribution. Additionally, for the study of axon-like parameter space, uh, we performed the calculation of uh, photon survival probability. We folded them with power law with exponential cutoff. And what we want to do next is to compare them with the spectral energy distribution of the sources. Uh, NGC 1275 and also sources that we still plan to analyze in order to calculate the maximum likelihood um, and pose possible constraints on axion like parameter particles parameter space. So what we have to conclude is that more statistic, uh, statistics and detailed statistical analysis is needed. And in the end, I just wanted to show you again, this is the uh, parameter space of axion like particles. Um, you can see all different uh, experiments mentioned during uh, the, the, the last few days. And here, this, this part is uh, representing the part which is accessible by, uh, by gamma rays and which we hope will be ex um, even extended with the future, uh, future um, Cherenkov, uh, Cherenkov telescope array uh, CTA. So for future prospects in our group, what we plan to do is to scan the parameter space for more sets using a dedicated uh, calculation of critical energy to calculate the maximum likelihood function in order to finish the study with NGC 1275, use and search for other sources, also possibly pulsars, uh, implement this axion-like particles uh, search procedure in magic software, but also to proceed with a future, future arrays such as CTA and prepare a catalog and once data is gathered, analyze and do the study on axon-like particles. Okay, so that would be it. Thank you for attention. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask.